Welcome back guys! Today we're going to take a look at how you crimp your lugs onto your cables or bus bars. Crimping lugs can be done in very very many ways. You can do it from all the simple ways to just solder them in place to actually using a crimping tool and crimp them into place. When it comes to crimping tools there is also a big variety of tools out there. For instance here you have two of them. You have the one that is hydraulic driven and you have the manual one here. Both of them are pretty good tools and depending on what your purpose is they may suit you. So let's take a look at how I do and I will give you a couple of tips on what I have encountered so far. In front of you guys here you have a number of set of tools that I tend to use when crimping lugs. There are also two tools not in the view here. So we will start from the very very basic way of crimping lugs to the more advanced way or actually the more better way to do it. And you need to note before we start here that this is my experience. This is how I have been learned to do it and it may differ. If you have any suggestions or if I missed anything substantial, please don't feel afraid and just comment down below. If you say that this is not doable and you should not do it this way, also come with an explanation on why that's it. Because otherwise that comment is just useless. You have a couple of set of lugs here. If we take a look at the lugs that I'm using primarily to my system, we have everything from 16 square millimeter, 25, 35 and 50 square millimeter lugs. And the representative wires here of course. Everything from 16 to 50. And it's very very important that you don't use the wrong lug to the wrong cable. If you're using for instance a 25 millimeter lug on a 60 millimeter cable, that one will not be crimped properly unless you can set your tool to actually crimp it a little bit more. I do not recommend that. That's just for very very pure emergencies. Always if you can, use the correct lug on the correct wire. If we have our lug here and we have our wire here, 16mm lug and 16mm cable, you need to first determine the length that you need to cut off the isolation of. And I will be doing it right there. And I'm just gently making sure that I get through the insulation. And this wire I have here is very very tough to work with. So basically we have the wire here now. I gently try to screw it a little bit and straighten it as much as possible. This will make the wire a little bit thinner or tighter. It's now important to get this lug on and that can be a little bit complicated and I understand that some actually choose a bigger lug because it feels like they don't fit. But generally if you are very very careful and you will get it on and you will be able to screw it in. In this case as you can see I did cut this one intentionally a little bit long and this is for show you guys a little bit on how it looks inside. As you can see it needs to be a very very tight fit here otherwise the crimping will not work out perfectly fine. So basically guys if you get it long like this one you need to cut the end off and then crimp it again. The first and very rudimentary way to do the crimping actually is to use a vise. Using the vise is a very very simple tool to do it but I do not recommend it if you want the perfect match. It's just a matter of putting the lug into here and press it as much as possible. If you're going to do it this way and you don't have another tool, I do suggest that you do solder it afterwards as well. You can of course also use a sledgehammer and just against something tap it together by the sledgehammer. This will kind of do the same thing as the vise do in terms of actually pressing it together. The thing when you are pressing it together you are pressing it together in one end, at the same time expanding it on the other end. So even though it might be tight on one of the ends, it may be even looser on the other end. Another way to do this is actually by soldering. 
Soldering is very simple and yet effective and I know that some of you guys will say do not solder it, it's not the way to do it. But soldering actually works rather fine. It's important to understand that if you have a big gap in between the lug and the actual cable, for instance, if you take a bus wire that is very very thin and you put it into a lug like this one that is very very big, I would start by actually pressing this one together and then adding solder. And adding solder, adding very very thin solder will take very long time. So I generally add a little bit of this first and then I go back and fill the gap in with a thicker rod like this one. So let me show you how I solder this now. I use a can like this one, a gasoline propane driven can, because doing it with a soldering iron, even though I have this big one here, will not work very good. The copper in the wire will take the heat off very very quickly. And it's not about actually wise holding it, because that's just a fraction of what a wire does. You should be heating it up until it actually changes color. And this may be a little bit tricky to see on the video itself. Try not to heat the wire or burn the wire off too much. And now it starts to change color. That means it's hot enough. Then it's just a matter of actually adding solar inside. My solar is way too thin, so it will take me a lot of runs to actually fill it in. And when that's done, just leave it to cool off. One side note when soldering is that solar will go on either way. It doesn't care on where you end it up, it will just flow out. That means that the solar will not only be stuck inside the lug itself, it will actually travel on the wire also. And that means that the wire will get very 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 stiff if I try to bend it here. And that's one of the bad things if you ask me about soldering. You will have a very very stiff wire close to the lug. Another way to actually get those lugs onto the wires is actually using this type of sledgehammer kind of pressing tool. As you can see I only have it on an image here and that's because I don't own one myself. I have been using one earlier and they do work even though they are a little bit of middle point in comparison with actually using a proper tool and using the wise. They are better than the wise but still a proper tool is better than them. It's now time to take a look at the proper tools. The proper tools in terms of actually crimping them in a six edges way. And the reason why you are using proper tools is because when you are crimping the lugs, if we take a lug here, we want this lug to be crimped in every other direction together to make this area as small as possible so that the wire inside cannot come loose. And we'll kind of bond them together. And if we take the tools here, you will see that they are formed with six edges. And that means that when they press them together, they will press them tighter and tighter. So for instance, if we take the lug here, you will see, for this one to actually be able to fit inside here, it needs to press this one together. I have two tools in front of you guys here. I have a hydraulic version here, that is said to be able to press somewhere around 70 ton. And we have this manual version here. Believe it or not, this manual version is a lot more expensive than this one here. And the reason for that is this one is, uh, as you can see, made in China. And I bought it from USA for some reason. My version here is broken. It did hold up, I would say, somewhere around 30, 40 lugs. And then it started to leak like hell. I have not looked into it anymore. Because I genuinely think that this one is rather crappy. Um, this is a cheap tool and there are a lot more better expensive ones. And the expensive ones are better, I know that because I have tried them. But they are also bigger. For instance, to be able to press this one here and get the pressure you need, you need to, I'm really, you need to pull everything you can. So if you want to try that one out, I have linked it down below and I know people that have success with it. I have not been able to have full success with it. 
But this tool here on the other hand is what I really like. This tool have pressed, I don't know, 200, 300, 400 lugs now and it's just performing very very well. It's not hard either because you have rather long handles. Good thing with this one as you can see is it has this feather based stuff here and that means that we can, if we press this one down, we can turn this around. And by turning this around we can change the sizes. Let's take a look. So we have the 10 millimeter there, you have the 50, 50 16, 25, 10, 35, oh, sorry that was 6, yeah 6 it was, 35 and 10. So you have everything you need between 6 and 50. So as long as you don't want to go above that this one is fine. And you can get this one for bigger lugs as well. So let me show you when I actually crimp one with this one and how it looks like. So basically we have the lug here and I'm using the example one with a little bit more cutaway for you guys to see how it looks. So what we first need to do is actually set the tool to the correct measurement. And this is 16. So we turn the 16 ahead and we do that on the both sides so we have 16. If we look at the width of this tool here, you will see that it's not more than like 4 or 5 millimeters. And this lug is wider than that. So I tend to try to crimp more than once. And I also always start at the bottom. Because if you start too high up, you may press the wire out. So it's just a matter of taking the bottom edge and you press it together. And the first one is done. As you can see, it's neatly pressed together. So let's do the another second one as well. We press it like that. So we basically have the lugged lug pressed together. And as you can see it fit really really nice. And if I put it in the vise and try to pull here, it's impossible for me to pull this one out. I will either destroy the vise destroy the lug or destroy the wire before it actually comes loose. What if you are going to and add lugs to your bus bars and are using this design here? For instance I have three wires on each of those twisted together and they are beside each other. That means that they are not perfectly round. We are adding a lug on top of that. You will have a big play in one or the other directions. In this case back and forth and not to the side. What do we do then? I have this 25 lug here. This one actually doesn't go over. So I take the lug, take the hammer, I widen the lug a little bit so it's a little bit wider instead of the height and suddenly I can get this one to fit, I hope. So if you haven't filled the hole up perfectly fine in the lug the lug may not sit perfectly and in the end the lug will come loose. So let's crimp this one. Crimp it once, so let's crimp it one more time. If you are unsure when doing it like this, you can always add some solder up in the end. Since this is already very very stiff, it doesn't matter if you actually solder it to it as well. But I can assure you, if I put this into the vise and try to drag here, I will never be able to get this loose. But for safety measures, add some solder if you want. The last thing about the lugs is that when you are done here, the best way would actually be to add some insulation here. And just adding either insulation tape or adding heat shrinks on top of this will make it so much nicer. The best way is if you can get the insulation very very close to the actual lug. If you do that the lug will be very very fit or it will look very very professional. So let's compare two lugs here. This one is soldered, this one is pressed. This one even though this is very very much thinner wire as you can see here it's very very loose and I have no problem running it back and forth. Meanwhile, this lug here, I would say it's a little bit hard to see 
but I that part that is closest here will not move at all because of solder inside it. It's just the top end or the bottom end here that will move. So basically you will lose and you will get a very very stiff end here compared to this one that will be very very soft, very very close. Yes. So guys I hope you enjoyed this video. Pressing lugs shouldn't be that hard. And with proper tools like this tool here, pressing lugs is very very simple. If you don't have the proper tools you will just end up with lugs that may create heat, resistance and even come loose and create fires. So guys, please press your lugs properly. If you can't, solder them at least so they stick together. I have linked down below the tools used for lug pressing in this video. I do recommend this one as the first choice. It's the best one if you ask me. If you still aren't a subscriber to my channel, I suggest that you do press the subscribe button down below. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to check them out. I have plenty of them around solar. I also have a couple of videos around building low cost and um, working with cars and all the stuff like that. And don't forget to press the bell if you want notifications when new videos actually come out. So guys, once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!